Many of you decided to not read it, right? That's how the slide. Low temperature exchange unit. That's how the X. We still have two more minutes to read this. Two more minutes to read this. Yes. Shock is inside the separator, so I cannot touch the shock. Do you read that line? Do you read that line? Shock is inside, but in the picture, the shock seems to be outside, but actually it is inside. Okay, it is inside. You didn't read it. I'm here when I told you to read out here. Let me just read for that. We have two more minutes. Okay, this slide should make more than two more minutes to read. Okay, take out your ID card that have your picture. Greater will go take a look on your card to see if it's matched with your face. And then you can sign. Okay. And if you notice that your friend is missing, call them to come to the real quiz, okay? Thirty seconds more before we start. Any question? About RPAs? Maybe? No question about RTX. Um, I think I have five seconds more. Would you like to start? No. Let's end this seat. Let me sit. Okay. You have more seat? Oh, yeah, the table. The table. We have 63 seats with 63 students in row. We should have enough. Mr. Brandt, could you please accommodate him? All right, let's start. First of all, who has university excuse to not come on Saturday? I have three. Raise that hand. Okay, if we have more, no more. Okay, just three, okay, we'll be on. Can you go on Friday? Yes, sir? Three of you, can you go on Friday? Yes, oh no, yes. You cannot do Friday? I've already talked to Mr. Lord, And you okay with that? Okay, we will make some arrangement for you. But probably not you. All right, LTX. Last time I told you to read it, okay? And you finished reading it? No. Not yet? Okay, so you go read it, okay? I think you go read it at home because it's not in here. I don't think, I don't think it's in here, okay? So you should be fine for the quiz. But you go read it, okay? LTX. Advantage, disadvantage. I update this slide a little bit because it's not that clear. Okay. This choke is inside. Okay. I move this to heating coil. So we we have that heating coil or something, or we choke it until the temperature is about 120 F. If you Google, you will see exactly this picture on the internet. It's everywhere, so we also use it. Okay. This is about RTX. One thing that you need to know is it is difficult to operate. Whenever reservoir uh, become older and older, you may need to share the set point because if the gas, incoming gas has different different pressure or different temperature, you have to rearrange this adjustment. Of course, that thing is already in here. So you will read it. Okay? Maybe today is not a good time to check if you read it or not. Okay, next thing we talk about. Uh, Erosional velocity, and based on the equation, I fool myself to understand that. Hey, look, if rho is small, we 
sub e is big. Yes, that is true, but I think it's misleading when I, one of your friends told me, when I think about it, we don't just calculate v sub t. We do the comparison between v sub t and the actual velocity. v sub e alone doesn't mean everything. Okay? We compare them. If the actual velocity exceeds v sub e or is higher than v sub e, it's not good. We are going to have erosion. If the actual velocity is lower than v sub e, we don't have erosion problem. So this means, when I look at this equation, okay, without any calculation, I say, hey, actual velocity depends on temperature over this, uh, over pressure, okay? Temperature over pressure. V sub e depends on square root of temperature over pressure. Okay? V sub e itself depends on square root of t over p. But velocity is just t over p. So this means in the case where we have high temperature, high temperature, t should be higher than square root t. You believe it? Yeah. So in the place where we have high temperature, this means v could be more than v sub e. So last time, whatever I said, it's probably wrong. Okay. You will end up check every point. Okay, you have the point before the choke, after the choke. Actually, there are just two, three points, right? At the inlet, before the choke, after the choke, at the outlet. Check all those points and find out in what case V is higher than V sub E. If V is higher than V sub E, we have erosional problem. And we want to make a pipe become bigger so that it flows lower. Good? You agree? Everyone agree? And like one of your friends mentioned, the pipe, we prefer to have it strong enough to withstand the well shut in pressure, right? right? We want that. We want to withstand well shut in pressure, both before the shock and after the shock. For the case where we have pipeline shut down, if we, if we close the wheel at the wheel head, no problem, right? But if the pipeline company close at the pipeline, the pressure will start build up, build up, build up. Eventually, there's no flow, but we have good amount of pressure. So we will try to have it withstand the shut-in shut pressure. No question for me? Please read LTX. At least, okay, at least, at the very minimum, you should be able to tell what are these, or what are these, or maybe not that right. What is in the coil, or what happened outside? So we have a cold gas coming in, and it's got a shock. We have hydrate form, and hydrate fall down, hit the heating coil, and it melts, and it goes this way. Okay? The limitation of LTX, already spelled out over there. I put it over there. All right, next we are going to talk about hydrate inhibitor. We have three kinds, and could be more. One of them is thermodynamic inhibitor. Thermodynamic inhibitor is directly change the phase envelope. Okay. It directly impact the phase envelope. It trim the phase envelope so that, let's say, has, uh, thermodynamic inhibitor is methanol, and glycol. We add more methanol, methanol is very flammable. We add more methanol into it. Instead of stay inside the phase envelope, we are outside. Is that good? Yes, that's pretty good. So even if it is high pressure, low temperature, we add more methanol into it, then we are good. <coughs> Another thing is kinetic inhibitor slow down the rate of formation of hydrate. Next is anti brand. It may form, but it doesn't get together, it doesn't block the time. Of course, you will read those. That is just long version of what I talk. This page, this page. It's just a long version of what I talk. 
what they use for hybrid inhibitor. Sometimes they have to use MEG, monoethylene glycol, injected continuously, for example, in a sub Okay, this, this is about the very best practice for the deep water gas condensate field. Okay. For that sub thing, people recommend to have about at least 12 hours cool down time by use insulation. This line means that if we have emergency shutdown, we have to stop it. Okay. Sub temperature is about 40 Fahrenheit. It's cold. Gas coming down may be hot okay, or warm enough. But if we close everything, due to environmental temperature. Liquid inside will get cold, colder and colder and colder because of heat loss of the subsidy temperature. <coughs> Eventually, it will reach the point where it stays in the hybrid phase level longer. Okay. If we insulate the pipe, okay, use polyurethane, if we insulate the pipe, the rate that it cools down will be slower. So we stay hot, in a longer period of time, okay? And they recommend the insulation thickness to be enough for 12 hours. So this will let the fluid inside to stay warm for 12 hours. That's what they recommend, okay? And for the offshore platform, they try to avoid methanol because it's flammable, okay? And <coughs> for gas export uh, line, they recommend to have Water vapor of less than 2.5 pounds per million centimeter foot. And you may read this page. Glycol can be recovered, methanol cannot be recovered cheaply, so most mm, very frequent they use methanol, monoethylene glycol. Okay, here's the equation to do the calculation. How much you make? And we will go through the example on how much. Uh, alcohol or methanol do we need? Okay. Mm, let's call some name. Who's not here? Everyone is here. Okay, Indro. Oh, sorry. Let, let's let's do something else. Yong Shang Sheng. Okay. What is the purpose of adding methanol? Scott T. Coleman, what is the purpose of adding methanol? It is a hybrid inhibitor, Chow Chow Shen. You like his answer? Yeah, okay. How much do we add? A lot, okay? If we add methanol, we may have to add a lot. We, have, we add it until the operating point is outside the hybrid phase envelope. Okay, we have to add it until we are outside the hybrid space of law. Here's the equation to do the calculation. Delta T, the pressure of hybrid formation temperature is degree Fahrenheit. Okay. K is a constant from the table, which I will show you. W is weight percent from 0 to 100 of inhibitor in final water, in the water phase, in liquid phase. Okay, I put here. Inhibitor must be in water phase to do any good. Okay? Inhibitor that is in gas phase or dissolved in oil or hydrocarbon phase are losses. Not part of Hammerschmidt equation. So if it is in gas phase or in oil, it doesn't do any good. It must stay in aqueous phase or water phase. Got it? All right. When I add it, maybe it need 10 gallon, maybe. But I need to add it more because some of it will go into oil, some of it will go to in, into vapor, and we hope that 10 gallon go into water phase. Okay? So if I know that another 10 gallon will go to oil phase, and 10 gallon will go to water phase, then I add 20. Make sense? So this 
equation will tell me how much should go in water phase. Okay, let's see how we use it. This is the name of inhibitor, and this is the K constant used for that equation. Okay, and that equation, this thing has been Fahrenheit. So you just substitute the value. Molecular weight, methanol, 32, ethanol, 40 something, isopropanol. Uh, once we put this molecular weight in, we can calculate delta T. Or if we put delta T in, we can calculate W. W, you see that W. Most of the time we know delta T. Okay? And I'll show you how we know it. We read the graph. Okay, here's a chemical structure. There are many of them. The one that you will memorize is this and that. Okay? That one, I already put in there, is in the quiz or exam. There are many of them. That one, you have to memorize it. It's called MEG, monoethylene glycol. But this one, we do the calculation for methanol, okay? CH3OH. All right? The rest, okay, diethylene glycol, we have ethylene to tar. Triethylene glycol, we have ethylene kind of three times. Good? So you know chemical structure. If you know chemical structure, you know formula, then they need to give you molecular weight. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't need to. You know the you know the chemical structure, right? You can memorize that. So CH3OH, C is 12. Each of them is 111. So this was. 16 plus O is 16, and then I get 32, 32, and uh, 32.04, they are pretty close. Okay? All right. Let's see how we use that equation. Uh, that graph associated with that equation. So this graph is the relationship between pound of methanol per mmSCF over weight percent of methanol in water phase. Okay, we will see in a little bit how we use that. And we have, <coughs> here's the example. In this example, we have flowing temperature of 65 Fahrenheit. Gas specific gravity of 0.6. Okay, oil specific gravity of 0.86. Okay. You know how to calculate our specific gravity. What's his name next to you when he's sleeping? Are you awake? Okay? What's your name, sir? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Colton. 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 How do you calculate? How do you convert this to pounds per gallon? Uh, Multiplied by. That is all your specific gravity. Oh, yeah, you got a, a 8.34. Okay, 8.7. All right, you're not know, sleeping. Okay, we do that. Okay, so we have our specific gravity. We have oil flow rate. Methanol specific gravity is given as about 0.8. Calculate the methanol required to prevent hydrate from forming. How do we know how much we need to add? First of all, we need to check. Are we in the hydrate phase ever not? Okay. So the flowing pressure is 4,065 F. So if we check 4,000, 4,000 is this line. This is 4,000 meters I A. Okay, that's 4,000. And we have specific gravity of gas is 0.6, right? That's 0.6. So I draw that line. And hydrate formation temperature is about 74. 74. But we are at 65, so we are inside. We are over here, so we are inside. That's not good, right? This means we have to add hydrate until the phase envelope. Shrink by 47 minus 65 equal to 9. Okay, so we have to make the hydrate phase envelope. Shrink by 9 for a time. You agree? So if we are we are over there, 
and the hydro expensive amount go from that to that instead. So we are outside the hydro expensive amount. We may add a little bit, but just enough means delta T in this equation has to be nine. What do you think? Good. And in this calculation, they suggest um, the most conservative value for K. Uh, they suggest that one you will see in a little bit. What is that? Okay, how much water do we have? If we don't have water, we don't need to worry about hydrate, right? So we, we may have some water. So this example assume that at the high flow at the high flow pressure, there's no free water. But gas is saturated with water vapor at reservoir condition. So in the reservoir, we have water. Okay. It's saturated with water. Reservoir temperature and pressure is that much. Okay. And we read the chart to find out how much water condensed and become a free liquid phase. Okay. And this is the chart that they use. This is the chart not between wet gas, power mass per MMSCF. That's the temperature. That's the pressure. Okay. In this graph, we we get the dissolved water at two different conditions. Okay, let's go back. So this is going to tell me dissolved water. Water content of natural gas with correction for salinity, blah blah blah. So this tell me water content. Okay. This graph tell me water content. Okay. The operating condition is in the reservoir is eight thousand and two twenty four Fahrenheit. So I look at eight thousand nine. That's 8009. Okay. And I have to look at 224. 224F and 8009. And that's 224 and about 8000. I read that that's about 240. Is it 240? Oh, 230. 230. That's about 230. That's the number from the example. Okay. So I read that thing from the graph, it tell me that, okay, 225, and that 8,000, I have 230 power, so it's a dead power mass per standard cubic, uh, million standard cubic foot per day. I read it again at 4,000 and 65F. 4,000, okay, 60, 80, 65F, and it has 4,000 line. You know that I don't really read it. I know the answer already, right? It's about 10. But if you read it wrong, maybe you get a little bit different answer from the book. Maybe you get 10, 15 or something. Your answer may vary a little bit, okay? But when it's about 10 to 20, if you read, hey, I get 10,000, but that's wrong. You know that, right? Okay, you just read the chart. Okay, we read two battle, and we say, hey, the amount of water that we condense out will be 220 pounds per mmSF. Okay. Good? It's just reading the chart. And this part is about from hydrate curve. We know that at 4000, hydrate uh, formation temperature is 74, but we are at 65, so we have to add methanol until hydrate space envelope shrink by 9 Fahrenheit. Okay, so we put nine over there. And what do we use? Methanol, K value of methanol is 2335. So I put that in Hammerschmidt equation, 2235. Right? Molecular weight, 32 and 32. With that, I can calculate W. Question about that. It's a form question about that. All right. So that, yes. Um, how did you get the nine? Nine is based on the graph that I read. At 
4,000 PSIG. This graph tells me that at 4,000 PSIG, hybrid formation temperature is at 74. Okay. But the flowing temperature is 65. So if we stay in that, we will form hybrid. We need to shrink it at least by 9 Fahrenheit. So we put it 9 over there. Good? And do some math, we get W equal to 11%. Almost done. Okay. We know <coughs> liquid phase, okay? Amount of water, we know that amount of water is 220 pounds per mmSCF. And we know that methanol concentration in liquid phase should be 11%, right? Based on Hammer-Schmidt equation. So use 11 divided by 100, multiplied by 220, which is the amount, amount of water per million standard cubic foot. I get 24 pound per million standard cubic foot. 24 pound of the inhibitor, ethanol. Okay, good? Question, question, question. No question yet. I even have a question. All right. So next step, we know the amount that stay in water phase. We also know that it could be the methanol may be in gas phase. Methanol could be in oil phase. Okay, we need to know how much go to water, uh, go to vapor phase and oil phase. So this graph tell me, okay. It used downstream operating condition is the relationship between temperature, pressure, and power of met methanol per mmSCF over percent of methanol in water phase. Okay. So <coughs> let's see what, what this gives us. So it gives us methanol in vapor state. Okay, this is the power of methanol in vapor phase. The way that this book do is, I mean, I know Stuart, it's not done yet, it's not done yet. You have to see the example. This by itself is not that clear. I know you have a question. Oh, it's not about it, yes? Yeah, what's the difference between methanol in an oil phase or a water phase? Like, how do you have, what does that mean? It's not done yet, I told you. Okay. <laughs> This graph, they go from 65F, okay, and we know that operating pressure is about 4,000, and they, uh, they think, okay, 4,000 is about over here. Later on, I will show you another graph. 4,000 is about over here, and I get it about 1. Okay, that value is 1. Later on, you see another graph. Another graph. This graph tells some other number. Okay? It's a relationship between this thing, pressure, temperature, and this ratio of power of methanol per percent of methanol in water phase. Okay? So this is power of methanol, uh, <coughs> ratio of methanol vapor composition. Okay? So this is a methanol vapor. This graph tells us how much Methanol going to vapor. So the ratio is one. Okay. I put one over there. What is the unit of that? Power of methanol per million standard cubic foot over percent. Right? Percent of methanol in water phase. So I multiply by percent, then I know that. Okay, eleven pound of methanol is in vapor state. Okay. So this graph is not that complete. If you want to make it complete, you may say power of methanol in vapor phase. In vapor phase per million standard cubic foot divided by percentage. Okay. Read that graph, it gives me the ratio multiplied by the percentage. I know power of methanol in vapor phase. 
All right. How about oil? Amount metabolic oil that one of us asked the question. We don't know. They don't know. They assume. Five percent dissolving oil. Assume. Is that answer your question? Not yet. And then, oh, oh yeah, okay. And there will be something in water phase too, right? We already know 24.2 is going to be in water phase. Where do we get that? How much we equated, right? Methanol that going to water phase actually inhibit the growth of hydrate. Okay. 0.5% is assumption. Okay. The best practice is the suggestion that okay, assume by five percent. This of in water phase is methanol. So what they do is okay, I specific gravity is pi eight six and we have this number. Of course you will have you will write that down your information sheet, right? One thousand kilogram per cubic meter equal to three fifty five five something power per barrel equal to that much power per gallon. Did the conversion time is not given in the exam, but we assume that you have it. Alright. I know part is 6, I multiply with 350, I get about 300. And the amount of oil, let's go back to the oil flow rate. Oil flow rate is given at 60 barrel per million centimeter foot. So we produce 60 barrel every time that we produce 1 million centimeter foot. So I put 60 over here, multiply them together, I get the amount of methanol dissolved in oil phase. 90 pounds per million centimeter foot. 90 pounds. Okay. What about the one in vapor? The one in vapor comes from gas. It's 11 pounds. So totally, that much stay in water phase, that if we have that much in water phase, we need 11% as per Hammer-Schmidt equation. Because that 11%, another graph tells us that if you have about 11 power per million cubic like foot. And from engineering based practice or um, rule of thumb, we have 5% dissolved in oil phase, so we have about 90 power per MMACF. What is that telling you? Let's do next slide. About 125 power is needed so that we have just about 25 power to be useful to go into water phase. We have a lot of loss into oil phase. We have some loss into vapor phase right, or gas phase. But we have a lot of loss, like 90 power, into hydrocarbon phase. Okay. So this is telling me that it's take a lot, it's not quite practical, okay? So the loss in oil is significant in general. How much volume do we need for methanol? Oh, I need to know density of methanol. So this is just the unit conversion. Specific gravity of methanol is pi eight, and this is the unit conversion of the gallon. Do the math I get 18.8 gallon per million centimeter cubic foot. How, how much is 18 gallon? You wonder how much is 18 gallon? Have you ever seen one gallon? Brandon, how, how big is one gallon? That's Brandon. About that. When, milk, when we buy milk, that's one gallon. This requires 19 gallon per million centimeter cubic foot. And we produce 3 million times per foot per day, so we can have that much per day. It's going to burn everything, right? Methanol is very flammable. Okay. So I put over here 18 by 8 gallon is not practical. So we may better separate condensate now first. Or we may use other inhibitor. But this example shows you that inhibitor. To use other inhibitor, I will need to find a similar graph. Like, this one to tell how much, let's say we use monoethylene glycol. I need to be able to tell you how much monoethylene glycol will be in verbal phase with respect to percent of monoethylene glycol in water phase. 
and how much do we assume loss of mono in the in oil phase? Okay, and then we get this. You can do that calculation, right? Okay, in this calculation, there's something a little bit strange or bad. This is bad. This comes out nowhere. Right? Let's use another version. Okay, the third edition of the book. It gives me this chart. It still have time, but if you look at this right now, 25, 29, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, that has to be 60, okay? It is not quite 80, so it's going to be 60, and then that is 65. So we was at 65 for nine, and 4,000, that's 4,000. 4,000 is that line. So that is about 1.53, or 1.52. I just memorized that for the class. Okay. So you read the chart, it tells, by operational in vapor, over, uh, per one minute cycle with foot, over percent of methanol in water phase. And it happened that we have 11%, we multiply by 11, then I get that number. Okay. This chart is somewhat more accurate. Any questions about how to use? Um, how much for the question? Yes? No? No question? This has to be in the homework. Okay. All right. Next is about <coughs> separator. Yeah, well, he's going there. Calculation is super critical in deep water offshore wells. You have a line to be 40 to 50 miles long from a deep water well back to the host platform. Getting the methanol to that host platform is a logistics effort. You have to have a special methanol tank on the facility. Those cost money to build. The boats that take it out there can only have 20% of their load in methanol on the boat. That's the Coast Guard regulation having this big explosive bomb in the water. So the, the methanol calculation is super critical, especially when you're dealing with wells in the deep water where the bus is even after it's about 40 degrees. It makes a big difference. So we have something useful and can be used for real. You have your mind? Let's study more. All right, this thing is about two phase. Oil and gas separation. Okay. How do we separate it? Do you separate it? Typically, to use separator, we read a chart from manufacturer. Just that. But I want you to know more. Okay. Uh, we we use separator in the oil field, right, to separate gas from oil. Take gas out from oil, take water out from gas to meet the gas contract so that we can sell in gas uh, uh, cell line. If we don't have separator, we cannot sell gas. You agree? We need some kind of separator. We don't want liquid. Gas pipeline company don't want water inside. Okay? How do we remove water? Oh, use dehydrator. Oh, before we use the hydrator, we may have to separate most of it out first by use a separator. Separator will separate oil droplet from gas stream. Uh, Leonardo? Okay, I asked you already. Kunandi Mamet Delkai? Yes. Uh, Ma'am? Um, what do we need? <coughs> separator. As you say, just separate. As I say. Okay. So, <coughs> what happens if we have oil in gas pipeline? So, what happens if we have oil in gas pipeline? Is it good? Is it good, baby? It's not good. Are, are they going to shut down the pipeline? Yes. So when liquid go in, they will close it. 
if they have enough time, they will tell us that they will, be, they will call it. But if, they, if we just have a lot of it, they just call it. Okay? So we stop selling, we stop production. So when, when gas stop moving, it's not just gas stop moving. Pressure will build up, right? And everything will just stop. So we don't want that. All right. So your job, of course, like always, read this thing. Can you do that? Very easy, right? When I read it for you, you say it's boring. Okay, the calculation part. 90% of the time, you just do a silver design chart. You read from the chart. It tells, okay, if I have this much gas flow rate, I need this side of separator. That is 90% of the time. But that's not about it. Sometimes, we have some, kind, some other kind of separator is not on the chart. Some separator is not on the chart. Sometimes we work with the old unit. It's not on the chart. Sometimes uh, we need a custom build, unconventional size, it's not on the chart. Or sometimes you need to make the chart. Okay? Or you may have to troubleshooting the problem. So here we are going to dig a little bit deeper on how that chart is created. Okay? All right, this is a typical diagram for high temperature. For high temperature, uh, we may have